We've got a relatively new entry into the contact cement market. It's a similar contact cement like you're used to using all the time, but it's delivered from a pre-pressurized canister, so you no longer need air compressors and stuff like that to get the job done. I'm going to take you through the setup right now, give you a few pointers on how to use these new canisters, what to do, what not to do. So the first thing is we've got our canister. This is generally the, uh, the size that's used. They are available in larger or smaller. First thing to do is to attach the hose to it. Now, one important thing to keep in mind when attaching the hose is you want your, your attachments to be tight. Some folks are tempted to just do it hand tightening. You want to be sure to tighten it with a wrench so that the glue doesn't leak because it is under pressure when it's in here. Once you've got your joint tight there, you can attach your gun. These are pretty standard spray guns available for use with these canisters. And again, one attachment. It's important to remember that once you've attached your hose, you want to leave the, uh, the valve open so that it's under pressure at all times. A lot of people don't realize this and they're tempted to turn this off. But as you can see, it's on now and it should stay on. We'll do a test pattern, make sure we've got glue coming out. Now, this kind of contact cement is a little bit different than traditional neoprene-based contact cements. This is based on an SIS rubber. And what happens is you get a web pattern rather than an atomized pattern. As you'll see when we spray this laminate at this point. Generally, it's a good idea to do what's called a box coat because, as you can see, the spray pattern is going to indicate one direction. Now we're going to put it on the other direction. This product, in a normal environment, you want to allow it to dry down for somewhere between two to five minutes. It should be dry to the touch. So we're going to put this aside for the moment. And as with any contact cement, the adhesive goes on both the laminate and the substrate. In this case, we're going to use this particle board substrate. Again, we'll let this dry down for two to three minutes, and then we'll put our laminate on there, we'll J-roll it, and we should have an instant bond. In this case, our substrate appears pretty dry. Our limit, dry as well, no glue. So we'll put the pieces together. Keep in mind with contact cement, once it's in contact, you've got an instant bond. So you want to make sure you're positioned exactly in the right place. It's very important to get initial pressure on this. Make sure the two surfaces are in intimate contact. This will assure you a strong bond down the road. And at the end of the day, you've got bond. You've got a bond that'll break the laminate. 